Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining our webinar that continues the series of the New Moon webinars with the focus on the meditative support for the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. As we work with the energies of the Aquarius New Moon, we invite everyone to focus on the goal 10, reduce inequalities within and among the countries. Thank you for joining. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you. Our meditation work through the New Moon webinars, focusing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, is one of supporting and strengthening a shared vision of formulated thought forms of solution to address the many issues facing humanity in the planet. The intention is to elevate and vitalize the thought forms that will help to create conditions leading to the transformation of our world through the elevation of human consciousness. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work today, we support the vibrant activation consolidation and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. Thank you for joining us today and over to you, Dot. Thank you, Rebecca. In our naming circle, we unite our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into this group work together and as a group. In uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. So each one of us will now have the opportunity to state our name and where we are calling in from. Dot Maver, calling in from Sydney, Australia. And we'll begin with the organizers and panelists and then the list of attendees in in order as you see it on your list. Daniela. Greetings everyone, uh, Daniela Nistorovic and I'm calling in from Brussels in Belgium. Welcome Daniela. Duane. You're muted Duane. Wayne Carpenter from Grass Valley, California. Welcome, Dwayne. Rebecca. Rebecca Hood from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. Welcome, Rebecca. Rose. Rose Bates, currently from Colleen and from Button Willow, California. Welcome, Rose. Tracy. Tracy Arbor from Novi, Michigan. Welcome, Tracy. Alexander. Alexander Ilchuk, calling from New York City. Welcome, Alexander. Now we move to the attendees list. Annette. Good 
Annette from Germany, Munich. Welcome, Annette. Annette? Annette calling in from New Zealand. Welcome, Annette. Asha. Asha Rani calling from New Jersey, USA. Welcome, Asha. Avon. Avon Madison from San Francisco, California, USA. Welcome, Avon. Barbara. Welcome, Barbara. Barclay. Uh, uh, Barclay Milne from Querétaro, Mexico. Welcome, Barclay. Bernard. Bernard Schnering from uh, France by uh, Strasbourg. Welcome, Bernard. Brie. Bree, Bree's here in Penn Valley, California. <laughs> Welcome, Bree. Karsten. Uh, Karsten from Heisley, Germany. Welcome, Karsten. Thank Catherine. You. Catherine Pyre, Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Catherine. Daniel. Well, Daniel, welcome, Daniel. Darcy. Darcy Sesh here, calling from Washington, D.C. Welcome, Darcy. Diane. Diane Adams from Turlock, California. Welcome, Diane. Francine. Oh, uh, bonjour, Francine de Montréal, uh, Canada. Welcome, Francine. Merci. Francis. Francis, Penn Valley, California. Welcome, Francis. Georgina. Georgina Galanis, connecting from New York, USA. Welcome, Georgina. Jillian. Hello, Jillian Douglas from Norfolk, UK. Welcome, Jillian. Greta. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Greta from Denmark. Welcome, Greta. Hello. You may need to unmute yourself, Hella. Welcome, Hella. Jan. Hi, Jan from Montana, USA. Welcome, Jan. Jean Marie. Welcome, Jean Marie. Jeffrey. Jeffrey Swainhart from Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the U.S. Welcome, Jeffrey. Joe. Please unmute yourself, Joe. Welcome, thank you all. Joe from the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Mm, welcome, Joe. Yoke.
Hello, Welcome. I am Lisette from French. Say again, please. I'm Hello. Hello, I'm Yoko from I am Josette from uh, French, near Strasbourg. Ah. Beautiful. Welcome, Yoka, and welcome, Josette. Justin. Hello, Justin Wilkinson from Los Angeles. Welcome, Justin. Karen, and that's Karen Gendron. Karen? This is Karen Gendron from Southern Oregon, USA. Welcome, Karen. And Karen Gritska. Karen Gritska, Portland, Oregon, US. Welcome, Karen. Catherine. Hi, Catherine O'Brien from Christchurch, New Zealand. Welcome, Catherine. Catherine. Hi, Catherine Davison calling from Texas, USA. Welcome, Catherine. Kiki. Hello, Kiki, Bill from Washington, DC. Welcome, Kiki. Leslie. Hello, Arizona, USA. Welcome, Leslie. Lerner. Hello, everyone. It's Luna from Denmark. Welcome, Luna. Lynn. Hello, everyone. Lynn Murguia in Tucson, Arizona, USA. Welcome, Lynn. Marhilda. Marhilda, I am from Venezuela. Welcome, Marhilda. Michael. Blessings, everyone. Calling in from Hawaii. Welcome, Michael. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Borgen, Minneapolis. Welcome, Nathaniel. Olga. Welcome, Olga. <clears throat> Richard. Welcome, Richard. Robin. This is Robin in Kansas City, Missouri, the USA. Welcome, Robin. Silvana. Silvana, you need to unmute yourself. Welcome, Silvana. Tanya. Hello, this is Tanya from Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. Welcome, Tanya. Bali. Welcome, Bali. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Todd. <clears throat> so having deepened our Aseric connection through the sounding of our names and voices, let's now continue our alignment by visualizing ourselves as forming together a circle of radiant white light. And this circle forms the rim of our Aquarian vessel in which we will capture the life-giving waters of inspiration and higher impression today. We attune to our heart centers and we unite our hearts connecting with each other 
and with the vibrant group heart that lies at the center of our vessel. And we see the blessings and knowledge from the heavens streaming into the center of that group heart. And as we witness this connecting stream of energies from above, we align ourselves with those reservoirs of thought, which are the vital pools or wellsprings of thought that exist upon the inner planes, pouring forth from the hierarchy. We align with these reservoirs, these spring-fed pools, which provide the substance of thought that can be drawn upon in working out the plan for humanity and the planet. And as we prepare to enter the next phase of the webinar, we commit ourselves in service to achieve the depth and receptivity which will allow us to receive these higher thoughts into our group chalice from where we can pour them out to all open hearts and minds within the body of humanity of which we are a part. Over to you, Duane. Thank you, Rebecca. Is my screen now visible? Yes, Dwayne. Thank you. Aquarius, as we know, is mainly associated with Ray 5. And Ray 5, we know, is the, the mind. And it can be expressed in its lower aspect and its highest. And we're going to sort of focus more on the abstract mind in this brief astrological analysis of different influences that are taking place. Keeping in mind that the new moon technically was on Friday. We've had a wonderful outline on the beautiful symbology of Aquarius with the vessel and the chalice. And I need not repeat. And what I'm going to say about the astrological indications is going to be somewhat superficial but nevertheless relative and important. Everyone knows that in astrology, there's a number of different levels. And we're just going to basically cover quickly the basics. Now Uranus expresses the quality of the seventh ray and it also expresses the moon, ray three. And the Tibetan master has indicated that the moon, which is often associated with the lunar, really creates the conditions for instinct to be transferred and transmutated 
into the intellect. And then later, through Uranus, the intellect into intuitive knowledge. So again, we see the power and the potency of the lower mind and the higher mind. I love this quote by the Tibetan, and I think it summarizes beautifully the theme of this presentation and all of its different facets. The emphasis in the Aquarian age will be on the life and freedom from the tomb of matter. And this is the note which will distinguish the new world religion from all that that has preceded it. So let's take a few of the aspects that are sort of prominent right now. And there's a number of sextiles, squares, conjunctions, and they deal with uh, Pluto, Saturn. And a lot of these aspects astrologically are often seen as undesirable or negative. But when the big picture is seen, everything is redemptive. The moon, Mars, Pluto, astrological influences that really relate to the lower centers and unredeemed matter are lifted up into the light. And it would be naive to think that we individually, the groups with which we work and the entire planetary body are going to find peace without first lifting up into the light those things that need change and adjustment. So let us just keep that in mind. So in this last visual image that I'm bringing up, there's a quote from Agni Yoga, and it's based on the idea spiritually of the chalice and master m states in agni yoga one should accept the transmission from space into the open chalice the chalice is also another symbol of the vortex energy pours in from the upper northern most point, circulates throughout our bodies, whether etheric, astral, or mental, and then dissipates at the southern part or the bottom of the vortex. So there are numerous chalices and numerous linking etheric bodies to one great composite. So take a minute and meditate on this image, realizing that Aquarius also expresses the living waters of the Christ, or what theosophy designates the waters of space, which on one level can be considered watery and feminine, but on other levels, they can be considered 
fiery and very masculine. So just meditate on this for just a minute and then we'll transfer to Rebecca. Thank you, Dwayne. And um, over to you, Rose. Rose, would you like to share your screen? And you are muted. Yes, I'd like to share my screen. Is, is my screen showing? Not yet. Not yet. There should be a window prompting you to ask if you would like to share your screen. Yes, now we can see it, yes. Okay. Thank you. Let's go here. So as Rebecca shared earlier a little bit about the sustainable development goals, we know that the work we do here with these webinars and being esotericists working with thought matter is helping to build and strengthen the hierarchical thought form into manifestation on the physical plane. And we see a wonderful example of that happening with these sustainable development goals. These goals are the world's shared plan to end extreme poverty, reduce inequality, and protect the planet by 2030, which is a very ambitious deadline. It was adopted by 193 countries in 2015. These goals emerged from the most inclusive and comprehensive negotiations in UN history and have inspired people and leaders from across sections, geographies, and cultures. We're going to, we're focusing on goal 10, the reduced inequalities. This goal is actually very complex in that it encompasses about 14 different points of inequalities, which is very vast. And I'll briefly, for the sake of time, just read the first line of each of these points to kind of get a comprehensive sense of the overall picture of what reducing inequalities really looks like on a global scale. So the number one, focus of this goal is by 2030, progressively achieving essence and sustain income growth of the bottom 40% of the population at a rate higher than the national average. And by 2030, empowering and promote the social, economic and political inclusion of all, ensure equal opportunity and reduce inequalities of outcome by eliminating discriminatory laws, policies, and practices. Adopt policies, especially fiscal, wage, and social protection policies. Improve regulation and monitoring of global financial markets and institutions. Ensure enhanced representation and voice for developing countries in decision-making. Facilitate orderly, safe, regular, and responsible migration and mobility of people. Implement the principle of special and differential treatment for developing countries, in particular, least developed countries. 
encourage official development assistance and financial flows. And by 2030, to reduce to less than 3% the transaction cost of migration remittances and eliminate remittance corridors with cost higher than 5%. So we can see the subject has many facets, but I'm gonna focus more specifically on the reducing of economic inequality. This is a quote from the Tibetan from Discipleship in the New Age, page 317. The cycle now being inaugurated in the world is one of growth through sharing and that advanced humanity can now share the work, the responsibility, and the trained reticence of the hierarchy. Whilst paralleling this and simultaneously, the mass of men are learning the lessons of economic sharing. And my brothers, in this lies the sole hope of the world. That's a very powerful statement the sole hope of the world. It is basically saying that we have to have a shift in consciousness. We have to have holism. Because when you have holism, you now have a system, social system, economic system, political system that is for the benefit of everyone, the one humanity and the one family. And without that, you are never going to have the manifestation of the plan in its fullest in the physical form. So this is a little diagram that shows some of the progress that has been made with reducing inequalities among countries. The average annual growth of, of um, income of the bottom 40% from 2011 to 2015 is actually increasing. It, it increased, in the, the population grows faster than the national average in 49 of the 83 countries. But with that improvement, still one out of 10 people live below the international poverty line of equivalent to $1.90 US dollars a day. And in 2018, almost 8% of the world's workers and their families lived on less than $1.90 per day. And most people that are living in this poverty line are in regions of Southern Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. And these high poverty rates are found in small, fragile, and conflict-affected countries. And as of last year, or 2018, 55% of the world's population have no access to at least one social protection cash benefit. This, this goal is focused primarily on undeveloped and developing countries. But I think we need to widen that vision a little bit and we see inequality everywhere, right in Western countries, developed countries, in wealthy cities. I was in New York City a few weeks ago and it was such a stark example right in front of me where here you have one of the wealthiest cities in the world one of the financial capitals in the world. And there are literally billions of dollars in that city and multi-million dollar apartments and high rises. And as I was walking to the subway, there's a lot of homeless people in New York City. But in particular, there's this one woman, I'll have to try not to get emotional about this because it really moved me, is she was, it just really grasped me because she was sitting on a bench and I had seen her several days as I go to the subway, subway um, station. And when it would rain, she would cover herself with plastic 
and she had an umbrella, but she would sit on this bench all night in the rain. And I just thought to myself, what is wrong with this picture? Here we are in a city that has so much wealth, in a country that has so much wealth, and yet we have a system that says there is no place for this woman to go that is safe and available and welcoming, that she would rather sit on a bench in the cold all night in the rain. So there's really a lot of work to do right here at home, but it really is right in your face, this problem of inequality. And then what my other thought was, despite this, because it's everywhere, what's even worse than that woman sitting there without a warm place is our apathy that here we have hundreds, thousands of people pass by her every day and we are, we are, our system currently that we live in, it is not to blame the individual, but it is that you have to accept a portion of this as being normal. You have to accept a portion of this as being a part of everyday, everyday existence. But yet it is, it is not a part of ourselves of who we really are because naturally within every person is a natural sense of, I'm going to help this person. I'm gonna give her a cup of tea. If she was at your door, you, if she was a dog or a cat, you would not let her sit in the rain. It's just, it's just kind of the, the conditioning of our consciousness due to the regularity of in how we to sort of function and survive in the environment that we have been brought up in. But with that, there is a lot of change and a lot of change in consciousness. And a prime example of that is this World Economic Forum that just took place in Davos, just literally a couple of days ago, and right on the new moon. And these people were talking about the environment and about politics and about economy. And some, I'm gonna focus on some of the, the leaders and what they had to say about our capitalistic system. This is a quote from Mark Binioff. He's an American billionaire in the uh, tech industry. He says, capitalism as we have known it is dead. This obsession we have with maximizing profits for shareholders alone has led to incredible inequality and a planetary emergency. That's a powerful word, a planetary emergency. And this is a quote by Fike Segbesma. He says, maybe somewhere we derailed a little bit where we thought making money is the real goal of the economy, where the real goal is to live happily here all together. And Angela Merkel says, the whole way that we do business that we live and that we have grown accustomed to the industrial age will have to be changed. We will have to leave that behind us in the next 30 years. And we have to come to completely new value chains. And I think that really is what this is about, values. Because when you have a system that is based upon a benchmark of value, of 
what works for everyone. It changes your laws. It changes your politics. It changes, it changes everything. So I'd like to leave a little, leave this brief stimulus section here with some thoughts. So we know that the hearts of mankind is sound and that goodwill is active in millions. And there are thousands and thousands of organizations making powerful contributions and changes in our social system, in our welfare system, in our society. And there's just been enormous progress. I am very heartened by the, the, the goodwill that is really being manifested physically. But where is the further, where is the disconnect? I'm not asking to answer these questions, but these is what we need to think about and ponder the thought form of, is where is the disconnect between the vision that is held by so many millions and the manifestation of it on the physical plane. What prevents that? And it comes down to, I think, largely a shift in consciousness. And we are experiencing that shift globally right now. And it's, it's, and I know many of you are very well aware of the Thrive Movement, and I'm just using this as one example of so much work out there to really show the power of this shift in consciousness that's been touched by over 80 million people have seen this video of, of a new paradigm, a new system of wholeness that works for everyone. And that is the consciousness that is beginning to manifest is we really are seeing the one humanity and the one planet like never before. And with our global communication, our global economic system, I see great progress being made and that globally, 193 countries have said, we are going to create these goals as our focus point is very powerful in the one political system of the one humanity. And with that, I pass it back over to you, um, Sasha or Rebecca. Thank you, Rose. Thank you so much. Um, so Rose has given us some powerful questions to think about as we enter into the meditation. And Tracy is going to lead us in that. Um, so over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. And thank you, Duane and Rose, for your wonderful presentations. Um, let us all now visualize our group center as we take a unified breath and align ourselves within the group field. Our hearts unite across distance and we extend our group light to illuminate and experience the loving heart of Gaia that is ever present in the one life. As a group, we lift our consciousness and look at Mother Earth, Gaia, in all her beauty. And with all the present challenges, we see the sustainable development goals, a blueprint that countries have agreed upon through the United Nations. We hold this thought form in the group mind now as we focus our attention on goal 10. 
we see the least developed and developing countries gaining the security and basic public infrastructure they need to support their own economic stability. Through this action, they grow, prosper, and become active members in the global economic community. Every state, country, and nation fulfill and sustain the needs of their own people, and then expand this effort by practicing the will to good with each other through sharing their unique resources, gifts, and talents. Global economic harmony ensues, and a robust and balanced and sound economic system is achieved. With this image in our mind, we enter the power of silence together.
As we register our impressions, we see goal 10, expressing itself through various initiatives. These initiatives include the governing bodies of least developing and developing countries acting in a positive and beneficial capacity for their people as a whole, which opens the door to the assistance needed to boost their country's economy. Through this action, these countries now gain equal access to financial services through sound banking systems and the cooperation and collaboration of organizations such as the International Monetary Fund, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and the World Bank Group. All states, countries, and nations are acting consciously, and together they act in the best interest of humanity as a whole. The full expression of Goal 10 is realized as economic equality is practiced and the needs of each state, country, and nation are fulfilled. The livingness of no one left behind brings economic and financial resilience all over the world. We now anchor this thought form and distribute the energy gathered as we sound the mantra. Let the forces of light bring illumination to all humankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May all those of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all of us be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Thank you. The coordinating triangle will now facilitate the open floor discussion for all participants in this gathering. Thank you, Tracy. We invite now our circle to open for sharing and expressing impressions received. Many of us um, are self-muted after the initial introduction. So if you are muted by organizers, please raise your hand and we will unmute you. Also, we invite you to use the question section of the control panel to share your impressions in writing. Hello, Tanya. Yes, um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, all the presenters and uh, in a very special way, Rose Bates, because she made a very deep, heartfelt um, question to all of us, where is the disconnect? And um, thank you for sharing me, with me uh, your experience, Rose, in New York. I agree with you. It's very disheartening to see, even in the rich cities of the world, that inequality is happening. And uh, you also shared with us 
uh, some news on the progress that has been done so far. All this um, gives us a lot of hopes, but then we see our government uh, representatives returning to the country, and then it takes a uh, month and months to go some of the uh, some of the projects to go to Congress or to be accepted and to be enforced. I'd like to uh, share or oh, answer your question your provocation uh, rose by saying that I think the disconnect uh, is in the lack of love, love in action uh, or brotherhood in action, you know, because we know the government is doing what they can, United Nations doing what they can, but then on the personal level, what can I do to help? Okay, I am from the educational area and I would like to share with you the thought form I worked all day this morning, uh, which is in the area of art education because um, this is all related to second ray, love and wisdom. And um, I want to share the um, a quotation that's very small. It's a text written by Nicholas Hirsch, which is uh, most of you are familiar with. Um, and uh, it has to do with art education. Quote, art will unify our humanity. Art is one, indivisible. Art has its many branches, yet all are one. Art is a manifestation of the coming synthesis. Art is for all. Everyone will enjoy true art. The gates of sacred source must be opened wide for everybody. And the light of art will ignite numerous hearts with a new love. At first, this feeling will be unconscious, but after all, it will purify human consciousness. How many young hearts are searching for something real and beautiful? So give it to them. Bring art to the people where it belongs. We should have not only museums, theaters, universities, public libraries, railway stations, hospitals, but even prisons should be decorated and beautified. Then there will be no more prisons." End of quote. So uh, on the personal level, if we can all share whatever abilities we have and do a body work, you know, one-to-one -one soul and help whoever is in need, uh, stimulating the person's creativity and do, into doing some artwork, this will give some renewal and uh, and also doing public um, demonstrations of art, you know, cultural art uh, related to the people, to the poor people, so that they become important and they have an opportunity to participate. So this is what I wanted to share with you. And I sent uh, Rebecca to your email box, uh, this text by Nicholas Hirsch, if you can uh, share with the group. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tanya. Um, I've sent it to you, Sasha. So are you able to open that and post it for everyone? Yes, I will repost it in the handout section. Great. In, in a couple of minutes. Um, Thank you. There is a comment from Sharon. Thanks so much. I'd like to share a quote that came to mind while holding this stimulus in mind. It is from the externalization of the hierarchy on page 279. And it goes like this. Only when humanity offer all that it has to give to the service of the sad, the suffering and the oppressed, and will work actively and intelligently to bring release, can that full cooperation be established between inner and outer potencies, which is so deeply needed at this time? Thanks again, and with love to all. That was from Sharon. And I will repost it. If anyone would like to share, please either unmute yourself or raise your hand and we will unmute you. Uh, 
Uh, Francis, you are muted on your end. Please unmute yourself. Yes, this is Francis, and I just like to underscore the importance I feel of what something Rose brought off brought up in the quotes from different leaders. One was of Bart Benioff, a billionaire technology entrepreneur in Silicon Valley. He has been very outspoken in the financial media and in business leadership councils about a shift in priorities, so to speak, where he represents a growing number of, of business leaders that are changing their consciousness, so to speak, with their priorities as relates to inequality, to being responsible to the, to the consumers that they serve, not just shareholders, but they're broadening their perspective. And <clears throat> this is taking place in, in, in our country. And as we, as, as we know, New York is considered financial center of the world and, uh, and uh, energetic Ajna center. And very importantly, this energy is starting to emanate from that center. So there is a slow but somewhat consistent change that is taking root in this area of our social and economic structures, uh, <clears throat> which is very encouraging as we're seeing it in, in, in obviously in political areas and, and, and in um, many other areas that have been uh, expressed here. I just want to reemphasize how important it is in my mind, because I feel that capital and labor are two sides of the same coin. And they've been, uh, so we say separated in that sense, <clears throat> but they're coming together and recognizing that they have mutual interests and long-term goals that will serve both of them if they get, if they uh, start thinking, um, you know, instead of separatively, in, they start thinking inclusively and acting that way. So it's a positive sign, I feel. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Marta shared it. Please note the passage of a recent resolution promoting the culture of peace with love and conscience, conscience adopted by the UNGA, United Nations General Assembly, on the agenda item culture of peace. This resolution represents a breakthrough in seed forms of solutions. Um, maybe, Marta, you could say a little bit more about this, how you see this breakthroughs coming. And Marta added, uh, April 5th will be called Day of Conscience. Thank you for <clears throat> inviting me to speak. The um, resolution uh, I should have said seed thought forms of solution. Um, there's been a hesitancy to speak at the UN in spiritual terms. And as we know, conscience is certainly a, a, an act of not only people of goodwill, but it's the threshold for initiation. So to pass the resolution on this uh, reflects a, a determination to use terms that are not essentially religious, but are deeply spiritual. And that was why I, I said that the thought form uh, of solution is uh, being held here. I do want you to know that Bahrain was the adopter, was the sponsor of the resolution, so there will be some cynicism about what is the purpose. But in my mind, anything that becomes formally adopted and written and promulgated takes on a certain vibration that is way beyond any country who sponsors it. So um, it, it's it, this International Day of Conscience on April 5th is uh, overlaying that day, which was called the Golden Rule Day, which is an essentially religious expression. 
So to pass a resolution that's called Day of Conscience in Love um, actually highlights something that Tanya had offered when she shared. I just wanted everyone to know about it. Um, thank you. Thank you, Marta. Joe wrote, just want to express my deepest appreciation for this evolving unified effort and an opportunity together with each new moon and build our substantive collective support for the United Nations goal, goals and the seed groups intuitively guiding us towards our highest purpose and plan. Many of us gather regularly in subgroups and related group meditative and study programs. The 2025 initiative and Global Silent Minute continue to fortify us and to provide sustainable sustenance for our forward movement. Gratitude so deep and profound cannot be fully expressed. Now we are with you. Thank you, Joe. And Georgina Galanis uh, says from SDG 4.7, bridging the gap in education to include STEAM, A for art is imperative for heart-centered and social-emotional learning in early education. Thank you, Georgina. I wonder what is this team stands for, the abbreviation. Maybe uh, Georgina could uh, share about that. Uh, you are muted on your end, uh, Georgina. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alex. Uh, STEAM is an acronym for science, technology, engineering, and math. And in recent years, uh, many movements have added A for the arts, which also includes social and emotional learning, um, which bridges the gap that we have in education. And many people are working on education in a way to bring it forth in a higher quality by teaching teachers new methods of connecting to their inner and innate multiple intelligences, their creativity and their intuitions, and how that can be shared with uh, young people in helping them to develop their skills as as leaders in the future well, thank you for giving me this chance to express this thank you georgina Catherine davidson uh share it in writing and i reposted it and i'm just wondering if maybe Catherine, you would like to uh give your voice to your sharing uh, otherwise i will read it uh, meanwhile, uh, Rebecca or Tanya, I cannot open the quote that you shared with me via email. So if you could resend it or maybe, uh, Rebecca, you can post it in the chat yourself. Yes, please, Catherine, if you could unmute yourself. Um, yes, I had my mic muted because my puppy is barking. Um, I just wanted to speak into Rose's question. Um, it's a deeply held exploration of my own. And so I wanted to speak to currencies because um, uh, they represent so much the, the flow or the lack thereof that occurs. And um, 
in a big study on philanthropy, one of the things they discovered is that actually individuals are never um, asked whether they'd like to make gifts or what their planning is for gifts and that it only comes in a discussion with their accountant about tax savings when they have a lot of income, Bella. <laughs> and, um, and, a, and in a related sense, um, many of our financial trades also include no moment to question whether anything is set aside for our more vulnerable people. And um, so, you know, millions and trillions are traded on a daily basis by robots and none of the robots or the mathematical algorithms ha have the heart factor included. And I feel this is an important point of uh, disconnect. So I, I just wanted to place that in this space because um, a few progressive economists have made very excellent cases for how affordable and attainable this one goal would be. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. If any of our panelists would like to uh, share any follow-up thoughts, I can contribute to those circle sharing. I would just like to say that um, I appreciate what Catherine just said and that it really goes back to there is no lack. It's not a question of lack. It's a question of priorities and structure. Hi, this is Tracy. Um, I would just like to say that I think with everything that's been discussed today and um, brought into the light, I think what we're looking at is a whole new paradigm that we're starting to create in the financial world. And uh, it's something that probably not um, However, just the fact that we're becoming aware of this and moving from the self to the selfless aspect um, and bringing focus to it either through the UN uh, sustainable development goals or even in our personal lives or in our own communities. Um, you know, small baby steps can make giant leaps if we work together. And I think that's what's kind of happening at this point because the old system and the old way of doing things is just not working anymore, as we all well know. So I'm very grateful to have uh, the countries together that work on these development goals that will help sustain us and bring us into the uh, new paradigm. And I thank everybody that's putting their effort towards it, whether it be through meditation or physically going out there and doing something. You know, we each play our part and I think it's a wonderful thing. That's what we're here to do is share our gifts and talents with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. I would like to share about uh, just impression, one of the impressions that came during the festival week. While gathered in, in a circle at Lifebridge, we meditated uh, on Sunday for redirecting golden flow of money for the hierarchical purposes one of the impressions that came is that in a way we are called not just to redirect the the golden flow of money for the hierarchical purposes but also to stand in a point of responsibility of receiving 
the golden flow of money for the hierarchical purposes and mm, using them to manifest the hierarchical plan. And that is part of the redirecting of the financial flow. Start acting, utilizing the money to express the plan. Thank you. And Martha just shared, I reposted invitation to join the uh, Sunday initiative. So maybe Martha, you could uh, talk about this initiative a little bit, remind us. And I think it's a great initiative. We have, um, first of all, 2025 <clears throat> World Servers Network and the New Moon to thank for it even coming about, along with the Seven Marais Institute. But there are about 15 of us now who uh, come together <clears throat> for Zoom uh, from uh, South Africa and Finland and uh, Australia, uh, along with the United States and Canada, to um, focus particularly. We crafted an adaptation of the Sunday meditation and have a beautiful PowerPoint created by Bridget Murphy um, to. Um, um, uh, augment our meditation and we uh, have a little discussion afterwards it it um, it takes an hour the meditation itself is about 30 minutes and then we further discuss the way uh, we're actually discussing right now this new paradigm that's that's building a new civilization and um, changing our own attitudes about money not only in terms of consumption but as alex said in terms of reception and creation new forms thanks alex thank you martha and i reposted the link that avon uh, shared with us um maybe even you could uh, say about this, what is, uh, is this uh, link for Hazel Henderson? If you could unmute yourself. Hello, thank you very much. Um, I just posted the link for Hazel Henderson's website. She has been in the forefront of, of socially conscious investment, but also socially conscious distribution for about the last 40 years. And she has been a forerunner in this particular realm. And she is an advisor to, um, to different governments, but also to different institutions around the world. So she is one of these quiet forerunners that I recommend um, connecting with her website if you want more information. And thank you, everyone, for your presentation and the, the quality of the discussions, because this adds to the potency of the implementation of SDG 10 and its relationship to the other SDGs, particularly I'm thinking of, of the one um, that has to do with partnerships, Goal 17, because it's through partnerships and sharing with unlikely partners and at the local and community and global levels as well as national levels that the uh, principle of sharing will be able to be um, realized. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. And uh, Bree, please unmute yourself. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to read something here, which I think will add to the conversation. Uh, in the last year, the UK uh, has seen the number of the homeless ro uh, raising 7%, and in Germany, the last two years, 35%, and in France, an increase of about 50% in the last 11 years. These, uh, in America, of course, same, same problem. Uh, this is all the same across Europe seeing the homeless rise, except in Finland. 
and Finland has decided to take the uh, uh, homeless crisis and just put it, you know, what they call uh, upside down. And instead of waiting like a lot of belief systems are and people getting their act together, just putting them in shelters and waiting for them to get over whatever their personal problem may be, and it's different for everyone, they've started a, an initiative called the Housing First, started in 2007, and they're, they're giving homeless homes. They're just giving them homes. And so this comes to one of the answers that Rose brought up about what's the disconnect. The disconnect is the will to do good. And it doesn't even have to be just out of love. It can be out of practicality. And that uh, the narrative, we have to be really careful because I have good loving people that I'm, I know that live in San Francisco that would normally not say this, but they say, well, you know, San Francisco is a great place, but it, you know, there's so many homeless. And that's because the narrative in this country has changed. The homeless are now, the burden they're 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 you know uh, inconvenient and we just kind of want to step over them and we really have to be careful about the narrative that we are uh spreading in not only right now in the current climate of the rule of law but in the narrative of uh insensitivity and so when there's a will there's a way and finland found a will and so this is this is now available for all of us to see this outcome. And we, we have to put our resources into it. It's as simple as that, we can't talk about it. We have to elect officials that are going to put funds, major funds into these kinds of crises and, and helping families. So just wanted to mention that to you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, Rose. I loved what you said. I sent you a little text. Bye. I think that's, um, thank you so much for sharing that, Brie. And I think that's very inspiring. And there are these solutions actively in the world and they're setting an example for the rest of the world to say, look, it can be done. And this, it might take a little bit of sacrifice, but this is, a, but the benefits far outweigh any sacrifice and it's again like it's not a problem of lack it's a problem of priority and organization so thank you so much for sharing that Bree. we're getting close to the end of the webinar and if anyone would like to have any final comments uh, our focalizing triangle or in our uh, circle please yeah thank you Sasha I would really just like to add something in um, with regard to the disconnect as well um, and since we have the example of um, homelessness quite front and center, there's a really um, great example that I've heard about in our local part of, or in Queensland here, and um, um, which is that um, people who own multi-level car parks have been making them available as safe spaces for homeless people overnight and setting up um, a, a proper sort of support system where people can actually go and sleep in the shelter of the car parks. And this, uh, um, I've heard, has been um, received really well by the homeless community. Um, and I, I think it's an example of, it, it relates to an important aspect of how we bridge the disconnect because 
um, I've also heard, uh, spoken to somebody who's um, involved in um, trying to create community housing and um, heard of the difficulty of how to, um, you know, get homeless people to be, get interested in being educated and um, give that, that they may not be interested in having a proper home and a proper home in inverted commas. Um, and I think that a really important part of this, the new systems, if you want to call them that, that need to be created, but this kind of more organist, an organismic way of organising um, is involves the necessity of us learning or implementing processes for how to communicate and for how how people can um, voice need um, effectively to each other across the whole society because the the people who are utilizing these car parks are very very happy with this solution um, and um, you know it, it, it's something that speaks to their community um, because there is a commun there is a strong sense of community often among homeless people, and it's not that they always. I can't speak for them, but I, you know I've heard how that it's not necessarily that people who are homeless want a, a conventional home. They want safety, um, shelter, and the ability to um, conduct their community in the way that they want to communicate to conduct it. So um, I think it just raises this question of how we listen to need and how we create space for the expression of need. And this seems like a really important point in the linking of goodwill and conscious, conscience and action that's going to be effective. And um, this was alluded to also by Tracy in discussion about um, in some disadvantaged companies, countries where beautiful education systems were set up, you know, advanced education systems, but none, no one attended the classes because everyone was busy um, getting water. So it, this, um, point of listening to need is really important in effectively mobilising resources and creating this world where everyone's needs are met. Thank you, Rebecca. Dot, I wondered if you would like to share anything about the video that I'm about to show. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Um, this very short clip will give us a moment to enter into our closing. It's taken from the bottom of the street here oh, in the outskirts of Sydney, Australia, uh, where I take a walk along the creek in the mornings. And it will demonstrate that there has been some welcome rain in this desperate uh, area where fires are still burning uh, throughout Australia and particularly up and down the East Coast. So let us continue to hold our focused, loving intention with our brothers and sisters and all life in Australia and around the world. May the healing love and blessings of the Holy Ones flow through our united hearts as we continue our intentional service for the realization of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. 
May the beauty of no one left behind become the manifested reality of these times. So let it be and help us to do our part. Thank you for joining us today. We invite you to join the Going Meditation on Sustainable Development Goals and in the next cycle of Aquarius Pisces cycle, we invite you to bring your focus to goal 12, responsible consumption and production. And we will gather together in the days after the Pisces new moon to share and meditate together, strengthening the thought form of solution for achieving the goal 12.